Hello everyone. So, welcome to the craft terms glossary term blanket stitch. And this is a part of our primary deconstruct series that is a multi-dimensional concept collection that is aiming to dismantle and replace the hierarchy of fashion by being present with our psyche and with our materials and through crafting we can cultivate a relationship through this so we want to first acknowledge the the lands that we're on we're currently on occupied Duwamish and Coast Salish lands so standing here on the land acknowledging the lands of our ancestors of the lands that all of our ancestors have come from whether we know what they are whether we know what they're called today whether we know what they were called then we acknowledge them and with the sky above and the sea that surrounds us we call on all of our complete ancestors we call on the elements and the directions of our complete ancestors we call on the elements of earth and water fire air and ether we call on all of these to come into this space to fill this space with their love and to guide us through the process of transformation and with this we erect our imagination flag as we enter into the ceremony of crafting and explore the blanket stitch now this is a shirt that used to be my brother's dishwashing shirt and this yellow is from a shirt that I once bought from a thrift store and then donated it and then and forgot about it and then one spot from a thrift store again so it re-emerged into my life and both times I loved it but then there's something about it that I just didn't it was just uncomfortable and so we're gonna enter into it I'm we're going to Well, you know, we're going to do the blanket stitch, but I think we might need to do the basting stitch first. Um, we started to do the basting stitch for this one before, and I'm just cutting this off because it was like, it's going to be bulky in the seam otherwise. If, if you want it to be bulky, then you can keep it in and that would create some sort of texture. In fact, we could even like reinsert it into this collar because it like opens up. So we could insert in a little dimension into the collar. Um... Although, well, no, I think it would reach. So, if we insert this inside here, it 
then we need to like stitch it down. We need to do a stitch, maybe a whip stitch, some sort of zigzagging stitch so that the collar could still stretch. Or we could even just like baste it in there to hold it in for now and then afterwards we can do the um, let's baste it in there for now because we have a couple different basting stitches to do on this one we have the base we have this basting stitch to stitch this inside here and a basting stitch is a stitch that is temporary and that you do and you don't ex it's temporary it's different than like a a pre-stitch in that you usually take a small stitch and like you uh you take a small stitch and then and then you leave a larger space and then you take a small stitch maybe about an eighth of an inch to a quarter inch and then and then you take an you leave a space about a half inch to five eighths of an inch and then you do that or if I'm not using colonial metrics I could although it's tattooed onto my finger but as it's tattooed onto my finger it doesn't have it's relative you know it's relative to my finger because it's here on my finger it's relative to the inches if you want to think about that but I could think of this mark on my finger I could think about the texture on the knit so I could go this is a ribbing so I could take a stitch that's like two ribbing and then I could jump like the size of a finger I like coming up I like using descriptions that are not referencing um, inches or Met meters because I think if we're rooted in and it's just it's all relative you know and I don't I don't like the idea of one system homogenizing everything because measurement can be a way to really distort how people see themselves and um so how can the measurement be relative to each individual? Because it really is. So how can that be honored and how can that be like... Um, invoked in a way that... that is honoring what it's relative to with that it's not at the expense of something else so we're doing this basting stitch contemplating what is what does it mean to baste something what does it mean to temporarily hold something in place knowing full well that I'm going to remove this stitch I just think of like turkey basting or animal basting and then I think of um thread made from intestines And then I think of drum making. I'm 
I'm gonna look it up. What is the etymology of basting? Oh, beat with a stick from Old Norse, basta, to beat, wow. And then in French it says, build, construct, sew up, baste, make, prepare, arrange, to build. Inner bark of trees, from Old English, it's inner bark of trees from which ropes were made. Oh, so rope. Rope, rope is, I, that makes sense. I mean, ropes have also been used to beat people. That's interesting. I mean, that's awful, but I'm saying that's interesting in the sense of something that's like temporary. Because when you think of a rope, you can make knots and you can take the knots out. So it's like this temporary anchoring onto something. And, um, that could be said for somebody being beat, like, they have this treating people like they have a temporary existence, but our, our existence is temporary, so... Okay, so when somebody's being beat, they're... It's like... They're... There's this idea that they're, they're getting punished their punishment is temporary, but I would say that that is not temporary because once you colonize somebody's mind, you know, if somebody is getting beat for like punishment, the hope would be that they don't do it again. So once you colonize someone's mind, once you punish them, it's like, well, they're not going to do it again because they'll they'll internally punish themselves, and so... This material... I'm basting it into place. And I'm gonna do a more decorative stitch after I baste it into place. Is that decoration just in vain? Is it like a vanity? Is it a waste of energy to just stuff this collar with the other collar? But I, I wanted to, it's almost like this yellow collar is swallowing the neck of the old collar. So that could be related to colonization as well when you think of a parent and generational trauma and how generational trauma is passed down and how we inherit the trauma of our par of our parents. And that's really profound in relationship to this t-shirt as well because this was... This was made in 2018. But it says 1802. So 
so I wonder what was happening in Ireland in 1802 because in 2018 I was in the basement of my dad's house painting this shirt with my dad. We were screen printing and painting it together. And at the time my brother was living in, um, well he went through a series of like living in the desert. What was it called? The city, the city in the desert. The big encampment in, in California. I don't know why the name of that encampment is escaping me right now, but... So we basted our collar, right? And like... Now we want to baste our collar onto this shirt. And so to do that, I'm going to just pin it. And you know, if I'm going to hand, if I'm going to take the time to hand stitch something, I want it to look hand stitched. I'm not going to try to make everything perfect because I think there's a beauty in being able to see that something has been held and that says a lot. So I'm before I baste it, I'm just going to pin it in a few areas because um So I can disperse I can disperse everything around the neck. Two necks here. The neck of the the brother and the neck of the sister. And the neck of the sister swallowed the neck of the brother. And and then the neck of the brother said, what the heck, why did you swallow me? And then the neck of the father comes around and says, you're in my basement. What are you doing in my basement? And the neck of the sister says, look, look at the neck of the brother. Let us embellish this. Let us honor the labor of my brother. And the neck of the father said, Okay. And then also the neck of the father spilt the neck of the bottle all over the neck of the sister. And that is what this yellow shirt represents. There's stains on here. It's not just what it represents, it's what it is. There's stains on here from the wine that my dad spilt on this and Although I can't exactly remember who spilled wine on this. But the reason why I'm coming back to my 
dad spilling wine on it is because he spilled wine on a lot of things. And we're going to do the blanket stitch. Why no? We're going to do the basting stitch. Okay. We're still on the basting. The basting, in essence, is like what what is being passed on? What is, because, okay, if something is temporary, if you're saying that something is temporary, you're you're in this state of mind that's like living in the future and actually my dad refers to himself as a future thinker i don't think he would say futurist because i'm not really sure if he knows what that is um And even if he did, he would have his own definition, which is why I'm not. Which, don't we all have our own definitions for our words? Anyways. To call something temporary is to live in the future. Is it? It's to know that it will not, that maybe it's to know that it will not be carried into the future. But how will you know that? How will you know you're not just absolving a pattern and then repeating the same pattern in different ways? Like when a song is recorded or when this video is recorded, You, you could watch it, you could play it. I'll, oh, basting stitch, okay. I'm not doing the running stitch, I'm doing the basting stitch. So we're gonna be taking smaller bites, larger gaps. Smaller bites, larger gaps. What was I saying? Oh, right, so temporary. I could say I'm just temporarily holding this stitch, but <laughs> you could watch this video in five years and think to yourself, well, it's not temporary because I'm, I'm seeing it now too. And so we can, we can contemplate our actions and we can contemplate is this really temporary? Or are the effects of it what is temporary? And does it even matter? What out of all of this even matters? Is it our existence that matters because we are made up of matter? Or how do we recognize our multi-dimensionality. How do we recognize what, what more we're made up of? Do we matter just as much as this t-shirt? And is it the the physical matter that I'm talking about or is it the interpretation of the meaning of the matter what is the matter how do you define the matter for yourself
how do I define the matter for myself? Well, for myself, it's it's not really a definition, it's more of um, a relationship. And so, basting this, it's like holding something in place in order to do something else. And then after that thing is done, then I can remove this thread. I can untie the knot. I can stop beating, stop ridiculing, beating. What is it to beat something? Do you beat somebody in a race? Do you... What are you beating? Come on. Mm, we're going to um, get a new bl a new thread for our base. Well, we're not necessarily in a race for anything. We're not trying to beat anybody. I'm not trying to sew this the faster than each other because I only have this thread and you have your thread. And this neckline is the only neckline of itself. So something that is temporarily held in place. What aspect of my existence is temporarily held in space? I would say that this form, if we're talking about an aspect of um, what is it called? When you, oh, reincarnation. I think there are different ways to, that people might describe their belief or disbelief in reincarnation. But, um, I think that is an aspect of kind of being held when I reflect on my understanding of it if my form is being held if my spirit is being held in this body for my existence or my consciousness is taking this form for a given amount of time or an experience or for a dance for an aspect of creator to express through then that is a way that my being is basted here Temporarily held in place. OK. 
Okay. There we have our basting. And, um, I think this is a good place to end for now. So, thank you everybody for tuning in. And we'd like to thank all of our guides and ancestors for guiding us through this process of transformation. And we release this plane of the imagination. Thank you.